are set to go from the Ferrell Center. 19th ranked Maryland, 17th ranked Baylor. Getting set to jump it up down. Now freshman Dariana Little Page Bugs jumping for Baylor. Diamond Miller going on for the tip for Maryland. Masonis controls for Maryland. As expected, Baylor starting half court man to man defense. Maryland much bigger across the floor at almost every position. Diamond Miller off the dribble with the right hand. Too many steps. Well, this is the first start, first action for Caitlin Bickle, who was on the defense on that drive against Maryland. 6-1 senior. She's a good leader for this Baylor team. But she's got the injury on her right hand. As you can see the tape, it will be interesting to see how she can perform offensively today. Top of the key, Sarah Andrews. Coach Collins said she wants her to be more Batman this year as opposed to playing Robin last year. Pickle played her first game since March 6th of 2022 at the Farrell Center. A nice drive by Bickle. She wanted to foul, but these officials obviously are gonna let them play. Two very aggressive teams out here this afternoon. Diamond Miller throws it away. Sarah Andrews comes up with the coast to coast. Barrett, two nothing. Well, young lady making that bucket and the good defensive steal. Sarah Andrews is a preseason first team selection in the Big 12 Conference, a truly outstanding point guard for Baylor. Aliza Pinzon controls right side. Abby and this Myers. young lady, Abby Myers, transferred into Maryland's program from uh, Princeton in the Ivy League, averaged 19 points a game last year. Second straight turnover for the Turks. Maryland plays aggressive defense. Baylor plays aggressive defense. I expect you'll we'll see quite a few fouls here today. Asbury, Andrews, front of the iron. Well, Sarah Andrews has the green light, obviously, in the Baylor offensive attack. She is a good three-point shooter. Boy, is Diamond Miller exciting. Too much mustard on that pass, out of bounds. Yeah, nice cut to the bucket, but Baylor Playing pressure defense in the passing lanes, but good help there. Dropping on the baseline to get that deflection. And Cheyenne Sellers will sub in for Diamond Miller. Caitlin Bickle throwing the ball in to Jaden Owens for Baylor. Owens, number 10 there, leads the Big 12 Conference in assists and is second in steals. That young lady was a transfer into the Baylor program a few years ago from UCLA and has made a big impact. She controls in front of the turf bench. And you can see the size matchup differential favoring Maryland. Nice job by Little Page Bugs, the freshman from Oklahoma City, getting that offensive carom. Bugs, as her teammates call her, was a McDonald's All-American last year, coming out of the high school ranks in the neighboring state of Oklahoma. Look at this nice drive by Jaden Owens, but right there, the freshman positioning herself perfectly for the offside offensive rebound. She had 14 rebounds for SM, uh, against SMU Tuesday night to lead the battle of the boards for Baylor. And she showed some bounce there. Well, she's got some good hops to her, just needs to improve her shooting. She's been rushing her shots. Got a nice touch on the free throw, perfect arch, just a little excited, shot it a little too firmly. Comes into the game shooting 50% from the charity stripe. Brene Alexander has that inside rebounding position for Maryland. She's a uh, transfer from Vanderbilt. And she uh, had 11 rebounds in their last game against Davidson to lead the way. And she can light it up on offense, too. Baylor continuing half court, man to man defense. Uh, Abby. Myers pulls the trigger and Pinzon puts it back. Yeah, Pinzon doesn't score much, only averages about three and a half points per game, but you can see right there, she's very smart. Put that one back up quickly. Owens directs traffic and gets it to Bickle. The coach on the floor, Coach Collin calls her. Bickle barrels her way to the hoop, draws attention and gets it to Andrews, ribs out. Now Baylor's getting the shots they want. They like those three-point shots out of the corner. All three perimeter players for Baylor, Asbury, Owens, and Andrews, all capable of consistently knocking down those shots. 
Won't get much time to breathe tonight. Both of these teams love to run. Four turnovers so far for Maryland. Looking to avoid that and take care of the ball in this possession. A nice defense by Bickle. Masanis bangs her way to the hole. Yeah. Bickle, one of the best defenders on this Baylor team, ranked very highly last year in the Big 12 Conference and charges drawn. Almost got one there, but uh, just a, about a half step slow. As we mentioned, this is Bickle's first game action of the year, been out with that hand injury. So naturally her reactions are gonna be just a little bit off. Masonis at the free throw yeah, line. Yeah, Faith Masonis, a terrific player. She's a very aggressive. One of the captains of this Maryland team. Also one of 10 kids. Yeah, she's one of the few on the ball club that's been there all four years. Owens breaks the pressure with help from Andrews and sets the table. Darts to the basket. Puts it in reverse and finds Bickle. The freshman off the back of the yeah, end. That's a good shot. She took the shot she's supposed to, faced up, but just a little quick on her release that time. Baylor will certainly settle for those kind of shot attempts against this tough Maryland defense. Pinzon tries to find the hole, can't do it. How about that good hands by uh, Jaden Owens defensively? One of the best on-ball defenders oh, in the country. Really good transition defense by Maryland. That's obviously a big focus in their game plan. Get back quick against this Baylor team that likes to run. 10 on the shot clock. Andrews finds Bickle, who finishes. Uh, nice assist by Sarah Andrews. Always like to find the player that's going to penetrate into the teeth of that Maryland defense. Made the good slip pass to Bickle. First basket for Baylor in almost three minutes. Yeah, first basket of the year for Caitlin Bickle. Alexander from the corner knocks down the three. Well, she's got a lot of talent, averaging eight points and five rebounds coming into this game. Oh. Back and forth they go. The freshman takes care of business. Well, that may be the uh, impetus that little Paige Bugs needs to really have an outstanding game here today. She's at the right place at the right time. Good pass. Shaped up well to get that easy basket for Baylor. So little Paige Bugs is at the free throw line. Our officials today, a seasoned crew you mentioned before the game, Gina Cross. Felicia Grinter and Ma Forsberg as we get another look at the Hoop and Hawk. Yeah, that's a Final Four type crew. All of them with great playoff experience in the NCAA. One for three tonight from the charity stripe is Little Page Bucks. Alexander finds a cutting McDaniel. Offhand can't make it. Masonis fights for the rebound. Ball caroms out of bounds. It'll stay here. Hey, Coach, we having fun yet? We're having fun. Great game so far. 7-7. Big 10 against Ashley Uwusu for Maryland. They also had a player named Angel Reese that was an All-American for Maryland that uh, is now at LSU. Of course, Melissa Smith, second pick in WNBA draft last year. Sellers drops it off from McDaniel. Nice defense by Jamie Asbury, the lady that's called the best pure shooter for Baylor there, number 21 on your screen. Good defensive play so far. Baylor doing a good job with their half-court defense. Perfect positioning by Jamie Asbury. That was old school by McDaniel there, just clearing out. Both teams have attempted two three-point shots. Baylor's 0 for 2, Maryland 1 for 2. Asbury pumps and penetrates and finds Pickle. Wide open three for Jamie Asbury. It's rare she'll make that mistake, but Pickle finishes. Now, Caitlin Bickle, not the most athletic player on the floor, but probably the smartest. Beautiful job of positioning herself for that offensive rebound. Masonis falls away, in yeah. and out. Miller now grabs the rebound. You see Diamond Miller coming from that offside on the baseline using her 6'3 frame. Owens uses her speed in the open four. 
Finds Asbury, who misses again. Fowleroy's put back is no good. Players scramble for it. Out of bounds, last touched by the freshman Fauntleroy. Well, great hustle on the offensive glass, continuing for Baylor. Coach Brenda Freeze said before the game that was one of her biggest concerns, even with Asia Blackwell out. Blackwell was the second leading rebounder in the nation last year for Missouri. Thought Baylor's didn't rebound and we'd be hurt. Naturally, it will be, but they're making up for it so far. Diamond Miller from deep, wide right. Nice job by Caitlin Bickle continuing. Owens will take it. Owens will make it. Well, Jaden Owens mentioned earlier leading the Big 12 in assists, second in steals, that time making a huge basket for Baylor to go up by five. 7-0 run for Baylor over the last 149. Another turnover for the Turks. Well, Baylor's half-court pressure defense seems to be affecting Maryland. Cheyenne Sellers there, the outstanding sophomore from Aurora, Ohio, just made the errant pass. Seven turnovers so far for, Mar mm -hmm. for Maryland, well, none for Baylor. Baylor's half-court defense has been outstanding. Baylor has gone against teams that ran nothing but zone the last two games. So this is a... Uh, Eye-opener for Baylor going against a team that plays primarily man-to-man -man defense. Owens off the three-pointer, moves off the screen and gets it to Andrews. Five on the shot clock. Bears will have to hurry. Step back. Too short. Now, yeah, Baylor didn't get good ball movement there. You can't keep it in the hands of one player that long and expect a good shot. Nice job by Asbury getting back defensively. Masonis. Good face up by Masonis, the senior leader for this ball club, 6-1. She can play well all over the floor. Owen's oh, been the maestro tonight. Just yep. in and out. Yeah, that was a good shot. You got to take those kind. Masonis faces defense from Andrews and can't finish around the hoop. Yeah, I think Sarah Andrews got a tip on that basketball there. Looked like it would be an easy hoop for the Terrapins. Three-point advantage for Baylor, 12 to 9, 146 left in the first quarter. Well, Maryland doing a good job in their transition game. Baylor fortunate. They could have been burned right there, just missed the open pass. Good crowd today at the Farrell Center. Supporting the Bears. Well, good job on the offensive glass that time for Maryland. Brene Alexander, I mentioned earlier, had 11 rebounds in their win against Davidson Wednesday night. Good offensive carom for her. She can do it all. Led Vandy in scoring last year before transfer. Andrews tees up a three. Off the mark. Well, Baylor's happy for her to get that shot. She's normally pretty accurate from right there. 40% to be in fact last year. Pinzon picks up her dribble. Briggs off the mark. Going yeah. the other way. Nice job by very small Jamie Asbury against the much larger Maryland Terrapin. That time Bree McDaniel for Maryland picking up the foul. And we'll see more of that pressure. Diamond Miller in the forecourt between Bickle and Jane Mullins on your screen. She now heads off screen. She's got nine points in four minutes. And Baylor has allowed Maryland to score the last four points in the ball game, pulling the Terrapins back within one of the Bears. Oh, nice break to the basket, but just a little bit too aggressive pass by Jaden Owens. Bickle tried to do the little quick slip screen that time, but uh, didn't work. Both ball clubs playing outstanding defense as shown by this low scoring game so far. Penzon finds the handle. Now this young lady was an All-American Conference selection at South Florida last year, Penzon. Miller headed back to the free throw line. Now you can see Diamond Miller, we talked about how outstanding she is and very highly rated now on the WNBA draft boards for 
the selections this coming spring, but uh, right now, Baylor has got to do a better job of corralling her, but they'll let her get a step. Played with a knee injury all last season, and then ended up leaving the game against George Mason and missed the contest against South Carolina. You see the knee brace. Uh, that hasn't stopped four WNBA scouts from coming tonight, and I don't think it'll stop anybody oh, from no. pursuing her. Highly coveted. Baylor obviously can play for the last shot. Ten seconds to go. Owens directs traffic. Darts to the hole, off the glass, just misses. Little Paige Bugs with the rebound and put back, no good. And that'll do it for the first quarter. We are locked at 12. Well, Baylor's doing some hard things against that tough Maryland defense. Got the good drive, but didn't get the good kiss off the glass there for Jaden Owens. But we look, we looks like we do have a foul. Uh, you see uh, Brenda Freeze and her staff. Uh, they're going to review and see uh, if time has expired when they call that foul. Very hard fought first quarter of this ball game. Yeah, and, and, and Maryland, and you see Coach Brenda Freeze, though, you just saw it. They've got to feel good about being tied at 12 after that first quarter. Well, they've got so many talented players. They've got four first-team all-conference players from other schools that took advantage of the transfer portal this year and are on this Maryland team. They're expecting to be very good. This is a young Baylor team that's outsized here today. This is a toss-up game, in my opinion. All right, let's see, Coach. You know, you can see little Paige Bugs, the freshman for Baylor. I'm going to say that that it was a free throw. Yeah, it was a foul, rather. Now, little Paige Bugs going to the free throw line now is 0 for 2 on the afternoon, but she's been very, very productive. She may get the award for the longest ponytail in college basketball <laughs> this year, almost down below her shorts. And she's got three rebounds uh, so far today. Now she is one for four you know, She's from the got free throw such line. a good touch on the basketball. She's just got to relax. I watched them practice the other day, and she stroked it beautifully. There you go. That ends a three-minute and 23-second scoring drought for Baylor and gives them a one-point advantage as we head into the second quarter. Action-packed first half from Waco, Texas. Baylor up 13-12 to 12 in this top 20 matchup work on the floor. Now it looks like uh, Maryland may be going to a zone defense here with their alignment. Yes, they are right now. Little Paige Bugs faces a double team out of that zone and Andrews in the face of Sellers moves the basketball to the wing. Fauntleroy off the mark. Here that's, come the Terps. That's the spot Fauntleroy hit the three-point basket to ensure the win over SMU last Tuesday night. Diamond Miller, check that, Sellers. Yeah, Sellers drilling it. She's averaging 12 points per game, so she knows how to put the ball in the basket. 56% field goal shooter on the year. I'd say she knows how to do it quite well. Owens tees up another three. Rebound Bears. Fauntleroy from the corner. Too strong. Oh, a nice hustle by the junior college transfer, Katarina Ferrero for Baylor. She came into the program from Eastern Arizona Junior College. All-American there. Had some big baskets for Baylor against SMU last Tuesday night. You can see her using her good hops there to get the rebound in traffic. Good hands to the junior college transfer. Second ranked junior college player in the country you last year. You can see year. there, uh, Pete, the, all the Maryland fans that are behind the Maryland bench. Good turnout all the way down here in Waco, Texas. The rich tradition travels well. Nice drive by Bugs that time, but great team defense by Maryland. Good rotation. You know, Coach Nikki Collin trying to coach little Paige Bugs as she comes down the floor there. Give a little ball fake, she said, before she makes the move. A lot to learn for these freshmen especially. Baylor has two of them on the court now. Fauntleroy, 22, current Big 12 Freshman of the Week, and uh, little Paige Bugs, number five. You get some energy now. Now this is Jana Van Geitenbeek on defense for Baylor. 
Nice move by Tymon Miller. Yeah, that's a hard, hard matchup for a freshman like little Paige Bugs that time to go against a player like Diamond Miller one-on-one. -on -one. Biggest lead of the afternoon for the Terps. Sellers on the attack. Alexander rotates. Yeah, good ball movement, good player movement for Maryland as this Baylor defense shook up a little bit right now. That's going to happen when you have two freshman inside players on the floor like Baylor does against these experienced, I would call them stars for Maryland. And I would agree. Myers, one of those stars, inbounds. Sellers controls. Diamond Miller. The pick and roll, Masonis. Nice block out by the freshman Bella Fonderoy that time. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. Pick and roll. Nice move by Little Page Bug getting to the hole. That was great concentration by Little Page Bugs that time to get the ball in the rack. Nice pass again by Sarah Andrews. Myers pulls the trigger, shooting over 50% on the season from three, and that's why. Well, no surprise there. Baylor's got to do a better job of being in her face. Not good defense then for the Bears. Van Geitenbeek darts into the forecourt and go to the free throw line. Now Van Geitenbeek, who will go to the line, it was a transfer into the Baylor program this year from Stanford. Played on the national championship team. Yeah, you can see right there, she just steps back and nobody in her face. A little confusion on the perimeter for Baylor that time defensively between the junior college transfer, Ferreira, and Andrews. You know, Myers a transfer from the Ivy League. If you had any questions about, hey, can she play big-time college basketball? She scored 16 points in the first half against South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. no <laughs> doubt she could play. <laughs> They, uh, Maryland lost that game to South Carolina, did not have Diamond Miller in that contest. She was out with injury. So you can tell here today, if Maryland doesn't have Diamond Miller, they're not the same team. Van Dijkenbeek makes one of two, going the other way is Sellers, but going the other way too fast and too hard. Well, nice defense that time. I believe that was Fonleroy, wasn't it, inside? Yes, good defense by the freshman. They are growing up quickly here. Good positioning. The key there, she was outside the arc. That is what you always have to watch on those charge calls around the basket. Is the defender outside the arc? That time she was. Nice team defense by Baylor. Maryland starting to attack the basket much quicker now, much more aggressively. Maryland continuing to change defenses. This time a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court trapping defense. This team trying to keep Baylor uncomfortable. Andrews controls in front of the Maryland bench and pulls the trigger. Rough go for her today. One from seven for three. Asbury. Bears can't find it. Well, Asbury is a good pure shooter. The key to this is for them not to get their confidence down. One of 12 on the afternoon from deep. Well, Maryland defense has a lot to do with those misses. Not many, just pure wide open shots. Little Page Bugs moves it to Andrews. Little Page Bugs going to work against the double team. What a great move by Little Page Bugs. Dropped that right foot and went hard, hard to the backboard. Lead is two. Yeah. Now yeah, it's back to four. Yeah, you got to get back. She has to has help on that. Little Page Bugs cannot guard Diamond Miller one on one. Baylor defense has to get back and help her. Good transition basketball by Maryland, though. Get the ball in the hands of your best player and let her go to work quickly. 22 18. Terps with the lead. Van Geitenbeek. Asbury now. Knives into the lane, off the mark. Shooting woes continue for the Bears. Into the forecourt, Myers to Penzon. Tic-tac-toe passing, six-point lead for the Turfs. Well, not a good possession by Baylor on, their, on the offensive end last time. Maryland has them uh, discombobulated right now.
Van Guytenby looks to restore Merriman order. continues to change their defenses up and uh, it's keeping Baylor off balance, uncomfortable on the offensive end. The well has run dry for the Bears. Nice defense by Van Guytenbeek. Cut the baseline off well, forced the turnover for Maryland. That's Maryland's eighth turnover, ninth turnover into the game. It's really the only thing keeping Baylor in the contest. Bears just not shooting well right now, playing hard, but not consistently shooting well. 24% on the afternoon. Yeah, Baylor seven of 29. Asbury with the turnover. Maryland's nine of 17, Baylor seven of 29. You see Baylor has 10 more shots because of Maryland's eight, nine turnovers. Have to take advantage of those. Ball's poked away by Andrews. Alexander regains control off the miss with Sonis. Yeah. Travis. Yeah, she saw she got the long rebound and moved that pivot foot too quickly before she put the ball on the floor. Baylor continues to be fortunate in that category. On the day, Sarah Andrews, 0 for 6 from 3. On her career, she's 40%, so you know she'll find the rhythm, Coach, at oh, some yeah. point. She's a good three-point shooter, just as you say. Appears to be a little overexcited here this afternoon. Knows there's a lot of pressure on her with Asia Blackwell out of the game, the Bears' leading scorer. Ferreira, too strong. Now, Baylor probably settling for threes too quickly now. Had more success driving early in the game. One for 14 on the afternoon. 444 left here in the second quarter. Maryland up six on the road in a top 20 matchup on a Sunday afternoon from Waco. Ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, the better did a good job cutting off Abby Myers on the drive. It looks like it will be Terrapins basketball as we come back with Maryland up. Five. Exit against South Dakota, the 10 seed, haunting Coach Collins. Well, Baylor won the Big 12 Conference Championship for the 12th straight year last season, but they're picked fourth in the Big 12 this year, just like Maryland is a preseason fourth place pick in the Big 10. Myers crashing to the floor off the pass from Sellers. Kick ball, Baylor basketball. Well, when you have a player like Sarah Andrews, who's obviously the team leader for Baylor, and she is only one of eight, and the team is only shooting 23% from the floor, and to only be down by six to this outstanding Maryland team, I would say that would bode well if they can start scoring. And how about Jana Van Geitenbeek, young lady from Stanford, great penetration using that left hand. Maryland didn't do a good job of closing that driving lane, but Van Geitenbeek used her quickness. Sellers, the surgeon. Good help inside by Bella Fonelroy, making them get rid of the ball inside. I think they're going to get Caitlin Bickle for her second foul going over the back. Aggressive play by well, Caitlin Bickle. Obviously, the crowd upset with that call. They've let some very aggressive plays grow, but uh, let's take a look for ourselves. You judge what you think right there. Wasn't Bickle up high that got the foul? She got her down on the waist. Another foul. Well, that's going to be the fourth team foul on Baylor. Now, remember when the new rules that came in five years ago, when a team gets five fouls, the opponent gets to shoot two free throws automatically. That's a big key here with four minutes to go in the first half. Great break without the ball by Diamond Miller. Obviously a malfunction at the junction for Baylor on defense. Largest lead for Maryland. Nice execution by Maryland. Twenty-six to twenty. Terps lead. The freshman tried to cut into it too strong. Now that's not her shot. Baylor doing much better driving the ball to the basket than they are on perimeter shooting. The dynamic Diamond Miller to Pinzon underneath to Masonis. Yeah, Bella Fonelroy. I I'm hesitant to keep saying the freshman made a defensive mistake, but she did, and she is a freshman, and she's going to learn. Nice job inside by Maryland. 
Van Geitenbeek looks good coming in off the bench. Clean look at a three. Just misses. A good hustle by Bugs there on the long rebound in the corner. Andrews to daylight. Oh, what about that defense there by Abby Myers? Got those long hands up quickly, but Andrews was going to the basket, not settling for the quick outside shot. Just as we expected, a very aggressive game here this afternoon. A lot of physical players on the floor. Diamond Miller coming up and extending the long arm at 6-3 for the block, but got called in the meantime. Sarah Andrews, preseason first team, all Big 12 selection. A lot is expected of her, and she does have to come up big time for Baylor to have a chance. One for eight from the floor, but one for one from the field free throw line. She's got five assists, finding different ways to contribute. Mm. Miller racing into the forecourt. Now that well, there was no the chance move. right there. That's bad transition defense by Baylor. You're exposing Jamie Asbury at 5'6 to try to defend Diamond Miller at 6'3 by herself. Won't work. Little Paige Bug underneath. Pulls up lame, hobbling a little, but she'll go to the free throw line. Nice, really a nice job by Maryland using their team speed to get the ball up the floor quickly. Their little Paige Bugs continuing her aggressive play on the glass. Gatorade Player of the Year. Now she's got eight points and five rebounds. The freshman is been the big story here for Baylor so far today, playing above her experience level. Got good size, long arms, plays much bigger than 6'1". She was a McDonald's All-American last year before choosing Baylor. Crowd showing signs of life. Yeah, really a good crowd here this afternoon on a Sunday afternoon with lots of competition for TV entertainment. Penzon penetrates, working on Van Geitenbeek. And the Stanford transfer plays the defense and comes up with the loose ball. Into the forecourt, she finds Andrews for three. In and out, but Fonderoy with the foul. Beautiful job by Fonderoy. And a steal by the Bears, Andrews. Well, Sarah Andrews just cannot buy one here this afternoon, but how about the hustle by this Baylor team bringing the crowd to their feet. No quit, obviously, in this young Baylor team against this veteran Maryland ball club. Sarah Andrews, I keep saying, normally drills that shot, but how about the offensive putback attempt by Bella Fauntleroy? Fifth rebound for Bella Fauntleroy. I mentioned Fauntleroy hit that shot out of the corner to preserve the victory with a minute to go against SMU last Tuesday night here at the Farrell Center. Andrews back at the free throw line. Sarah Andrews is a much, much better offensive player than we're seeing here this afternoon. You mentioned it, Pete. Five assists, beautiful in that category. Has got to get her shot going. Baylor pulling back within four now. Two minutes left before halftime. Sellers faces the pressure from Van Geitenbeek. Diamond Miller plagued by a knee injury last year, showing no signs of slowing down this afternoon. Off the dribble, off the mark. Little Page once again clearing the glass for the Bears. Andrews knifing into the heart of the defense. Great drive by Andrews, just does not get the fortunate roll off the glass. Terps up sick. Fast and break. There's a lady that knows how to finish. Got that crossover step. Great play by Diamond Miller. Ten points in the second quarter for Miller. Van Geitenbeek. Little Paige Bug, that's how she can get into the scoring column, but can't make it. And they wrestle to the ground. Uh, it's Maryland's basketball. Good hustle continuing by Baylor, but uh, continuing to be frustrated by shots rolling out. You want to talk about a burst of energy, though. Janet Van Dijkenbeek, oh my gosh. Coach Collins said she's never had a player in such incredible physical condition, and she's showing us that today. Well, she is showing us that, and Baylor's going to need every ounce of that energy to 
try to pull off a victory here today of this against this very, very good Maryland basketball team. A bad mismatch inside. Jamie Asbury was fronting Sellers down low. I keep talking about these mismatches, Pete, because Asbury at 5'6 there is guarding Sellers at 6'2 down on the block. That's tough, tough, tough assignment. She did a nice job of fronting her to prevent the pass. Diamond Miller. Yeah, she is just so athletic and so quick using that 6'3 frame. 12 points in the second quarter for Diamond Miller. Ball's poked away by Pinzon from Italy. Caroms of Van Geitenbeek. 30 seconds left in the half. Mm -hmm. Andrews cannot get it to Little Page Bug. And here come the Terps in transition again. Sellers! Circus act to the hoop. She'll go to the free throw line. Well, Maryland continues to do a nice job of getting the ball up the floor quickly. They have good court vision, look up the floor promptly, and make the long pass when it's there. Take a look right here off the turnover by Sarah Andrews and Jamie Asbury and Van Geitenbeek just could not get back quick enough. Now I mentioned Penzon from Italy, 23 years of age, has played with the national team and showing some of that know-how and moxie with that beautiful pass and just knowing when to pull the trigger on the fast well, break. Well, she was all an uh, American Conference All-Star last year at South Florida, top team in that conference. Double-digit lead for the Terps, 36 to 26. Yeah, biggest lead of the game by far for either team. Maryland going back. I like the way they've changed defenses. I'm a big believer in that. Keep your opponent off balance. You're not necessarily going to steal it, but you make them think before every possession. Van Geitenbeek trying to get the lead to single digits before half. Yeah. Can't do it. Sellers rips the rebound. Long distance. And time expires. Well, it was a hard-fought first half. It's a story of Maryland. Terrific transition basketball, getting the hand, ball in the hands of Diamond Miller in the right place quickly. She's taking advantage in the first half. Maryland shoots 67% in the second quarter to Baylor's 20%, and that'll show you right there why they're going into halftime with a 10-point lead. Well, there'll be a lot to discuss on the part of offensive strategy and defensive strategy for both ball clubs during the intermission or in the right places at the right time good look at brenda freeze won the national championship in 2006 this baylor program has won three national championships in 05 12 and 19. Jaden owens quickly to the hoop draws attention and dishes to asbury who goes back to owens Big three to start the second well, and, half. And what happened? They penetrated instead of taking the quick three. They drilled it. Good job by Owens getting to that left corner. Drilled it. Nice shot. That's her second three. She's made both of Baylor's threes. Baylor's two out of 19. She's made both of them. And a turnover on the inbound. So Baylor awarded the basketball with a chance to cut this lead to five, maybe four. Well, I can't say enough about how that first basket was made off of a penetrating move into the paint with the kick out. Andrews off the dribble. Step back. The lead is four, just like that. Well, you just watch Sarah Andrews now. She's a player that can get on a roll quickly. If she gets her confidence going, Baylor showed great patience on both of those two possessions. Foot was on the line. They'll call the two. 36 to 31. Maryland leads. But Baylor making some noise. Andrews trying to make it four straight. She does. Well, after not scoring in the first half, Sarah Andrews, well, she had three at the half, but now five quick ones for Baylor. 7-0 run to start the second half. And Brenda Freeze will want to talk it over. Now, as we go to break, they are going to look over that three-point basket. Well, look at this great defense by Sarah Andrews right there, getting the tip out, taking it 94 feet, pulling the Bears within three with a their junior star point guard who did not have a good offensive first half but has come out on fire here in the second half to start this third period. Penzon, the senior from Italy. Goes to Diamond Miller, the all-everything 
off the glass for Miller, no good. Offensive rebound, Myers tees up a three. Her first miss from long distance of the afternoon. That was good team defense by Baylor as Diamond Miller made that quick penetration on the baseline that time. The freshman, Little Page Bugs, cut her off with team help. Myers breaks out of the congested corner and throws it to Owens. Seventh steal of the afternoon for Baylor. That's what a scouting report's all about right there, knowing where to go into that passing lane on kick-out attempts. Nice job by Jaden Owens. Asbury still can't find the mark. Little Page Bug. Now Bugs is so quick with her shot, used her strength and quickness to just split the defense. The freshman doing it again. 12 points now to lead Baylor. That's a career high for her. The Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Uh, she had 14 rebounds against SMU, but that is her point total high. Out of control to the hole, Lavender Briggs draws a foul. Well, Ma Forsberg there was in position to right, make the right call. Obviously, Caitlin Bickle wasn't happy about it. Fourth foul of the afternoon for Bickle. Well, that's a real tough break for Baylor. Caitlin Bickle had played very, very well. Let's watch right here. Yeah, I think that was the right call. She was sliding her feet. This is a great officiating crew here this afternoon. Final four caliber. All of them have worked there. Myers off the dribble, off the glass, too short. Ball trickles into the hands of Diamond Miller. Back to Myers. Quick trigger for her. No good. Rebound. Diamond Miller. And she'll go to the free throw line. Well, Baylor controlled the offensive boards the first half, 14 to 3. Maryland's controlling them here in the second half. The game's getting a little chippy. Gina Cross there trying to settle down the, uh, the Baylor five. Miller with some choice words well, for Owens. Well, this has been a very physical basketball game from the start. You see Jaden Owens reaching there on the offside, and uh, they did get tangled up, and that's what led to the mouthing. <laughs> Diamond Miller, first free throw is good. And she's the leading scorer with, in the game with 14. The freshman for Baylor has 12. And the Somerset, New Jersey native extends her team's lead to 38-35. Asbury operates in front of her own bench, goes to Owens. Two for three from beyond the arc, thinks about it. Ten on the shot clock inside a little page bugs, but we've got a foul on the floor yeah. before. Much better patience now for Baylor on the offensive end than we saw in the first half. Working harder for good shots, not rushing everything like they did before. They have fought back from the 10-point halftime deficit, deficit to only three now with 7.14 to go in the third period. Great atmosphere. Atmosphere here today in Waco. Long distance three from Andrews. Yeah. Well, that's two now. Two out of two for her. Tied this basketball game up. We said if she got hot, this could be a contest. That one was from Hillsborough. No, I think more like Corsicana. <laughs> <laughs> it was further than Hillsborough. <laughs> Myers. And Baylor has a chance to take the lead. Now Little Page Bugs getting another good defensive rebound, giving the ball off to Big 12 Conference's assist leader, Jaden Owens. Andrews looking for another one. The roof would have come off this place if that had gone in. Well, she needs to take it. She knows she's hot. She's got the green light to shoot it. Masonis from the corner. No good. Maryland shooting woes continue in the second half. Well, that was a tough physical foul coming over the back by Sellers that time against the much shorter Jamie Asbury. That time you see Andrews, as you said, partner shooting it like from Hillsborough. That's 30 miles down the road. That was a good foot and a half outside the three-point line. Baylor will have their first opportunity to take the lead since very early in this contest. 11 points on the afternoon for Andrews. Owens controls top of the key to Bella Fauntleroy. And here's Asbury gliding to the hole. Can't make it. Well, had a good shot. That was a nice drive using that left hand to gain the advantage against the much bigger Maryland lineup. 
Diamond Miller to the and heart see, of the Baylor defense. That goes back to what I keep talking about. Baylor has got to get players back in transition to double team her quick and make her get rid of the basketball. That's too easy. She is too good one on one. Fauntleroy drops it off for Little Buck. Excuse me, Paige Little Buck. And the freshman, Little Page Buck, 12 points, 4 of 8. Andrews, step back. Dipsy uh, do! Got like that kiss off the glass. That's her streak. Very explosive. I think she made her mind up at halftime. I'm a better player than this. Let's go prove it on the floor. So far, she is in this third period. Ten points for Andrews in the third. Miller, one-handed pass to Sellers. And she is fouled. We'll go to the free throw line. Nice on yeah, the very nice execution that time by Maryland. They come down the floor quickly and get into their movement very effectively. They're a good, good basketball team in transition. Do things very, very fundamentally sound. We are locked at 40. As you get a look. Sellers at the line, 12 points and five rebounds per game average coming into this. Take a look at this strong move by Sarah Andrews, just splitting three black shirts for the Maryland Terrapins. Terrific move by the junior point guard for Baylor. Too strong for Sellers. Here comes Owens. Five minutes left. Maryland clinging to a one-point lead. Andrews finding a cutting. Wow, little Paige Bugs was there. Yeah, that was good. Quick defensive help by Maryland, though, on that shot. Off the dribble. No good for Briggs. Miller back for wow. three knocks it down diamond Miller right there showing us why she is so highly regarded by all these WNBA scouts here this afternoon 20 points for diamond Miller both ball clubs doing a good job now in transition getting good quick shots drawing fouls keeping this game physical don't go anywhere we've got a great one 44 to 40 top 20 matchup Maryland leads Diamond Miller hit that last shot well covered. She's just a great, great player. And Jade Owens hits that first free throw. Owens now with six points in the ball game. Has that great vision to find other players, but she's been finding the hole today. Eight points on the afternoon for Jade Owens. You see some of that tenacious defense against Sellers cross half court. Well, Nikki Collins' biggest concern coming into this game was defensive matchups with Maryland's size advantage at all positions. Other than Diamond Miller, Baylor has done a good job, especially against Abby Myers. Ball goes off the knee of Little Page Bugs. Racing into the forecourt is Owens, too strong off the backboard. Little Page Bugs' follow up is no good, but she'll go to the free throw line. Nice job by Jade Owens getting the steal defensively and taking it all the way up the floor to draw another foul. She has eight points in the ball game. Little Page Bugs leads the way with 12 points for Baylor, but how about this? Already the freshman has a double double in this big time matchup. How about that for a freshman? Last year at this time playing high school basketball in Oklahoma City, now going against this great Maryland team. Jamie Asbury called Baylor's best pure shooter, didn't come close on that one. Sellers. So often has controlled things for Maryland's offense, goes to Myers. The transfer from Princeton. Nice defense by Asbury that time against the much bigger Myers. That was 5-6 against 6-foot. Abby Myers, the all-Ivy leaguer last year at Princeton. 
Andrews. Now that's too quick. Found the Roy's right there, but can't put it back. And Diamond Miller comes away with the rebound and races into the half court. Well, long shots like that often lead to long rebounds, which leads to easy transition baskets. That's what happened to Baylor that time. Regardless of how hot Sarah Andrews is, that shot was way too quick and enabled Maryland to get the easy basket on the other end. Lead is four off the make from Myers. Little Page Bugs off the dribble, off the glass, How good. About that with her left hand, great quickness, using those long arms. That freshman has got a future. Boy, what a matchup going against Diamond Miller. What a matchup. Sellers, three off the dribble, too strong. Ripped down by Little Page Bugs. Yeah, Maryland had nobody on the offensive glass that time. Oh my goodness, Sarah Andrews just shuffled that pivot foot too quickly. Key turnovers cannot happen at crucial times. Baylor cuts it to two with 2.19 to go and draws. That's only their fifth turnover of the game. The floor game for Baylor has been very well done all afternoon. Maryland at this time has 16 turnovers. That's really what's kept Baylor in the game. Only five turnovers to 16 for Maryland. Sellers controls and Owens has been all over her. One of the best on ball defenders in the country is Jaden Owens. Baylor has picked up the defensive tempo in this third quarter. Ball's batted away, another turnover, 17th of the afternoon for Maryland. Streaking into the half court is Owens finds Asbury who lifts it to Little Page Boggs and it's good. Well, how about that quick move? Little Page Boggs using her long arms to make it happen for Baylor. Good transition basketball now going in Baylor's favor. 16 points for Little Page Boggs, the freshman. Locked at 46, Diamond Miller trying to stop the bleeding, gets her own yeah, miss and puts it lady. back. Golly, how versatile is she at 6'3", so strong. Baylor's got a little more size in the lineup now, taking out the 5'6", uh, Asbury for the six-foot Cat Ferreira with the basketball right there, the junior college transfer from Eastern Arizona. Fauleroy rims out. Batted back to half court by Ferreira, Fauleroy. Great save. Coming up slow as she was right by our broadcast position. 10 on the shot clock. Tension here from the Farrell Center. Andrews can't make too strong. Diamond Miller pulls down yet another rebound. Her ninth on the afternoon. Masonis to the hole, exactly what the Terps needed. Well, and that again is what has been happening. Maryland comes down the floor in transition. Baylor cannot get set quickly enough in those mismatches, and Maryland takes it strong to the glass. Four-point advantage for the Terps. The Juco transfer, Ferrar to the hole. Yeah, Ferrar that time uh, did as she did against SMU, made a nice drive in there to cause trouble for the Maryland defense. She is six foot, that's a six foot gain in height for Baylor when they put her in for one of their very small guards. Sarah Andrews is gonna get a good rest now between quarters. She comes out with 16 seconds to go as Ferreira goes to the charity strike for the Bears. A six foot junior, Juco transfer from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Nice Makes touch. first. Yeah. She's going to be a very good player. Just learning the major college game right now. Big difference, especially, or I should say normally, defensively between the junior college game and the major college top five game, top 20 matchup like this. Playing some big minutes here early in November. Early in the season, I should say, in November. Diamond Miller controls. Baylor now 10 out of 17 at the free throw line. Maryland 8 out of 10. Miller dribbles behind her back. Launches a three. Nothing but the bottom of the net at the end of the third quarter. Showtime for Diamond Miller. 
Well, she can literally do it all. Hit two big threes here in the third period. That one at the buzzer beater. Take a look again. The number one prospect by the NDA in this ball game, Diamond Miller, now with 23 points in the contest. Maryland up by six, entering the flankings by the Associated Press. Kudos to all three of those programs, UConn, Baylor, and Maryland. So here we are, Baylor trails by six in the final frame. Packed house tonight here at the Farrell Center for this top 20 matchup. Down the wire we go. Step back for Miller. Karam's off the rim. Uh, nice block out by Baylor that time. Cat Ferreira getting the long rebound. Van Geitenbeek pushing the tempo. Thought better of it. Pulls it back out. Owens controls left wing. Now Bickle, remember, has four fouls. So let's see how she plays. Cross court pass. Van Geitenbeek controls. Five oh, on the my. shot clock, throws well, it away. Now yeah, there's, uh, Bickle tried to post up and did a good job. Van Geitenbeek just thought she was going to be posting a little higher than she did. Just the sixth turnover of this hard fought game for Baylor. Came at a most crucial time. Pins on the transfer from Italy. Well, how about those quick hands by Ferreira that time for Baylor? From Italy to Brazil uh, to another turnover. Well, good idea, but just uh, great defense by Diamond Miller. Is there anything she doesn't do? Got back and covered that long pass just beautifully. Great job by the senior leader from Maryland. Uh, she looks like she's been playing safety for the Redskins. Yep. Pins on to a wide open Myers. Well, they expect that out of her. She comes from Princeton. That's their offense. She can drill it from out there, hitting 50% from three-point land coming into this game. Owens floats to the rack, absorbs some contact. No call. Here come the Terps. Pins on. Wide open three. There's that transition game once again for Maryland. Great movement, getting the ball in the hands of good shooters. Maryland coming through at crunch time. Baylor missed the easy layup. Maryland comes down and hits the three. It has been a three-point assault so far in the fourth quarter. The lead is 12 for the Terps. Represent two conferences that are at the top tier in college basketball. We've got a top 20 matchup here. There's a top two matchup in Palo Alto, California. Stanford hosting number one, South Carolina. Stanford up by four with six minutes to go. Big turnover for Baylor. Yeah, they've just all of a sudden hit the wall here after about the six minute mark into the third period. They've lost their sharpness that they came out with to start this uh, second half of action. But give Maryland a lot of credit. They have executed beautifully. Masonis spinning to the basket, picks up a dribble, gets tied up by Fauleroy. But the ball goes to Myers, who makes no mistake. Yeah, great hustle by Final Roy, but just did not come up with that loose ball. And now Baylor finding themselves in a big hole with seven minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game. Bickle back from injury yeah, off the glass. Another example of what I keep talking about. Baylor takes it to the rack. Good things happen. You can't just keep flinging up three-point shots when they're not going in. Diamond Miller, she won't take her time. Way too long on that one. Sarah Andrews with the Pistons always pumping into the forecourt. Well, you see that Maryland defense running to those corners quickly. Andrews! Sarah Andrews, Baylor's fourth three-point basket of the game, her third. Let's see if that can ignite Baylor now to good things on the defensive end. Mismatches continue for Baylor. Little Paige Bugs, their best defender off the floor right now, getting a little rest. The freshman who's done such a great job this afternoon, not out there right now. Penzan, who led the AAC in assists last year, decides to shoot it and misses it. Baylor gets the rebound. Yeah, another good freshman for Baylor. Bright days ahead, Final Roy and Little Paige Bugs both, but uh, let's see what they can do on the offensive end. Baylor can cut it to six. Yeah, Maryland obviously wanting Ferreira to have an open shot out there. They'll give her that. Nice job getting it to Bickle. And the crafty senior, too strong, gets her own rebound, battles for it, out of bounds. 
Last touch by the Terps will stay right here. Well, good hustle by Bickle. You can see she's not quite in true game shape yet. Her first game of the year after being out with that hand injury. It's going to take her some time to get her rhythm back and knock down all those shots that she normally makes. But uh, she's fighting hard here this afternoon against this talented Maryland basketball team. And she is a coach on the floor for the Bears. Her presence out there really helps this team as Asbury takes the inbound and Bickle pulls the trigger from 15. There you go. That's wide open. Keep working it. Don't take the quick outside shot. Good job of getting it to that free throw line. That's where Bickle's at her best. Top 20 matchup coming down the stretch. 7-0 run for Baylor over the last 130. Myers trying to end it and does. Well, she's just so consistent. She's what you call a true pure shooter. She's got that 6-1 size, enabling her to get that shot just about any time she wants it. Andrews threads the needle for Bickle. Back to Andrews from long distance. It's good. She answers. Well, Sarah Andrews, as bad as she shot the ball in the first half, she's shooting it phenomenally here in the second half. Let's see what Baylor can do now, pulling back within seven. Maryland seems to have the answer each and every time Baylor cuts into that lead. Baylor staying man-to-man -man the entire game. Penzon. Yeah, they're just so crafty. Penzon doing that last year as an all-conference performer for South Florida. Foot on the line. Now, a freshman mistake right there. Tried to make the quick move on the baseline. Dropped that pivot foot on the out-of-bounds line. Look at Penzon right here. Getting Fonroy to back up. Takes that jab step and just drills it. Maryland now five out of 12 on three-point shots. Baylor five of 27 on the other side of that. 19% from three. Well, Maryland has eight threes. I'm sorry. She's looking at the wrong stat sheet there. Maryland with eight threes, Baylor with five. Here comes Andrews off of the Miller miss. Operates in front of her own bench. 4.30 left. Baylor down nine. Owens, tic-tac-toe passing. Bickle to the hole with the left hand. Try to keep the Bears in it. What a nice job of isolating Bickle there, driving with that left hand. Both teams playing fine basketball on the offensive end right now. Who can make the stops? Ten points for Caitlin Bickle, back from a hand injury. Diamond Miller, 25 for her. Spinning to the hole, that's her calling card, that spin move, and she hits it. 27 now for her. I said she'd be the focus of the Baylor defense. She is, but they have not found out a way to stop her. That young lady is dynamite in all phases of the game. Jade Owens, wide open oh. jumper, can't hit it. Gets her own rebound. Finds Andrews, a three, got it! Good gracious, Sarah Andrews all of a sudden just lighting it up. 22 points for her now, had three at halftime, 19 here in the second half. Three for three from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter. Baylor trails by just six. Coach, what do they have to do now if they're going to come down the stretch and win this one? Well, it's all going to come down to who can get stops on the defensive end. Both teams have found their rhythm offensively. That time, Maryland had nobody pressuring Sarah Andrews. Baylor's got to find a way first to stop Diamond Miller. I would double team her when she starts into the paint and make her get rid of the basketball. She is a handful in a one-on-one -on -one situation. She's proven, Diamond Miller has proven so far, she's the difference maker into this game with 27 points. You've got to get the ball out of her hands. And I'm sure Coach Brenda Freeze is telling her team, look, we can't give Sarah Andrews an open shot. We have got to get on her, make her get rid of the basketball. Fun game in Waco, Texas this afternoon. Terrific crowd on hand. Baylor students are out for the week. They left on Friday, not here to cheer on the Baylor women, but a very exuberant crowd enjoying this contest yeah, an electric atmosphere down the stretch 320 left there's diamond miller pulling her yeah, way to the how hole how about that they called a charge on that there's the freshman drawing the charge nice job of moving her feet 
Let's take a look right here. You can see little Paige Bugs. Diamond Miller just turned right into her. Nice job of sliding her feet. This freshman playing like a senior. Speaking of senior leaders, Bickle moves it to Owens. Elbow. Asbury now got it. They're eating that zone up right now. Maryland's just standing in that zone. Baylor's finding all the cracks in that defense. Bears have hit five of their last six. Miller going to try to stop the bleeding. Blocking oh, foul on Bickle. My. That'll do it for her. Yeah, that's a shame. Bickle goes out. Yeah, nice play. You got to give Diamond Miller credit on that. That's a shame to have Bickle caught in that situation. I think she was trying to back up, but uh, the striped shirts called the uh, foul on Bickle. Well, you're exactly right. She was caught in that situation. Yeah. Just hung out to drive well, against the faster Maryland player. Credit. Get the ball in the hands of their best player and let her make a play. She forced one of Baylor's key performers who's played well in this fourth quarter, but tip of my cap to Caitlin Bickle, her first game of the year coming in and playing very well against this tough Terrapin team. Diamond Miller, 22 points, 19 points, and today she has 27 over the course of her last three games. Her dad, Lance, played basketball at Villanova, coming from good stock. He played for Roly Massimino there. Down the stretch we come. Looks like Maryland's going back to man-to-man -man defense now. That zone got a little soft. The lead is six. 15 on the shot clock, 235 left in the game. Bears will have to move quick. And Bickle is such a facilitator when she's at the high post. Andrews from downtown, no good, but she's fouled oh, by Masonis. Boy, not a smart play by Masonis that time. Good gracious, the senior knows better than that. You don't foul a three-point shooter late in a basketball game, especially. Let's see if Sarah Andrews can knock down the freebies for the Bears. She comes into the game as a 71% free throw shooter for the season. And she has kept Baylor in this game with 22 points. Has come alive in the second half, but off the mark there. Yeah, she makes one here. You can see her get fouled. This steps right back out. Close call. These referees are calling it exceptionally tight here in the latter stages of this game. Oh, heartbreaking. Yeah, Andrews, 71% free throw shooters, knocking it down from three, but not from the free throw line. Seven of nine from the floor in the second half, and four of six for three makes it one of three from the free from the free throw line. The lead is five. Terps come into half court. Fans to their feet here at the Farrell Center. Diamond Miller, the dynamic scorer. The transfer from Pittman. Myers off the dribble, off the mark. Little Page Bugs, the skies for the rebound. Boy, he gets it to Owens. Bugs. They'll get the long rebound that time, securing it. Andrews, seven of nine in the second half shooting. Owens, the maestro so far this afternoon for Baylor. Off the glass, too strong, but we got a late whistle. Yep, good things continuing for Baylor when they drive to the basket. Doing a lot more of that here in the second half, and it's paying good dividends. Make these two, and it's a three-point basketball game. Jaden Owens, she may be the leading assist maker right now in the Big 12, and she's making some big points and good moves for Baylor. Really emerging yeah. as a leader for yeah, this Baylor team. Eight points in this ball game. She can go into double figures if she can make two right here. Nice, nice touch. From Plano, she's from Plano, just north of Dallas. Oof. Off the mark, Baylor two of five from the free throw line. Yeah, last she's two an 83% free throw shooter. Fatigue could be a factor here late. 135 on the clock, a four point advantage for Maryland. Diamond Miller gonna try to drive the nail in the coffin with help from her teammates. Pins on controls. Yeah. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Miller loses the handle, finds it, can't finish, but the rebound to Masonis. Oh, key bounce for Maryland right there. Baylor had a chance to get the long rebound, did not get the bounce. 
Terps reset. Oh, tough matchup with Asbury in there guarding the high post. He is so short. Five on the shot clock. The senior from Italy too strong off the glass, but Myers. Oh my, there's, I keep talking about the size advantage that Maryland has and Baylor's burned twice right there because of it. Two offensive rebounds, backbreakers coach. Well, that's the Maryland's credit. Great, great effort and uh, size makes a difference in this game. Always has and always will. <laughs> that's the advantage they came into the game with. Good look at Brenda Freeze, 2006 National Championship coach. All she's done in her 20 years as head coach at Maryland, been to the NCAAs 18 times out of 20. 70 to 66, Maryland leads as the two-time coach of the year talks it over with her teammates. And how do we get here? Well, look at the left side of your screen. Little Peach Bugs played exceptional 16 points, but can you match Diamond Miller, 29 points, 10 rebounds, coach? Well, that's the difference between a senior, Diamond Miller, and a freshman, Dariana Little Page Bug. She's played a great game, but Diamond Miller has played a phenomenal game. They have been big keys, obviously, for their teams, but right there, those last two shots by Maryland, Baylor should have had those defensive rebounds, but didn't get it. Maryland's credit went hard to the offensive glass, and paid big dividends. So Coach Collin gonna try to pull a rabbit out of her hat down the stretch. Well, it's certainly doable, 48 seconds to go. Diamond Miller been dazzling this afternoon with 29 points, controls. Only two team fouls for Baylor, so Maryland will not go to the free throw line unless they get fouled on a shot attempt. Myers controls. Pump fake to the hole. Too strong, rebound Ferreira. That time, Ferreira did the good defensive job for Baylor. Nice defensive board. Oh, my. Darting to the basket well, was Owens, and we've got a whistle and a turnover. Well, right idea, but uh, obviously, Jaden Owens just lost her uh, footing here. You can see her drive quick. She sees the lane wide open to the basket. Could have said there was a little bump there. Officials did not call it. Tough break for Jaden Owens, who has played a gutty, gutty game here this afternoon. And she certainly anticipated a whistle there after that contact to the body. Didn't get it. Well, that's why I say it was a good play. Normally, you're going to get a foul there. But uh, now with 21 seconds to go, Baylor in an extremely tough situation. Two tough physical teams going after it here this afternoon. Maryland, oh, of the last four offensively has a scoring drought of two minutes and 33 seconds, but the Bears have not been able to take advantage. Well, easy to see why both these ball clubs are ranked in the national top 20. They have a lot of strength, but both teams have a lot of things they can improve on also. That's what these non-conference games are for, coaches like you will tell us. Well, you can bet they're going to get the ball in the hands of Diamond Miller. There you go. At her size, she's big, strong. They're not going to double team and take it away from her. I think Maryland called a timeout. Career high for Diamond Miller. Maryland has one timeout left after this one. Oh, they called a foul. That's third on, Mer on Baylor. So Baylor will send the Terps to the free throw line upon their next foul. Almost a steal. All the last touch, they're going to say by Baylor. Close call there near the Maryland bench. So it looks like the officials will, will take a look at this, Coach. Well, you can see Ferreira right there going hard, trying to get the double team. With, under, with a, under a minute to go now, they can go back and look at every out-of-bounds situation and make sure the call is correct. Baylor tried the aggressive double team there to get the ball out of Maryland's hands. Now to say this is a major replay would be underselling it. Well, as I said before, Diamond Miller is so big and strong at 6'3", they can throw it up and she can go get it. So the possession arrow 
goes to Baylor, but that's not the issue at hand right here. It's who no. touched it last. Pinzon battling with Ferreira. Oh, you could say. Well, it's really hard from that angle to tell, but uh, it's close enough. They're taking a long look at it, that's for sure. Just like this entire game has been very physical from start to finish. Coach Freeze felt like she had the best look at it. She wanted a foul before any of the uh, out of bounds activity. So it's 70 to 66. The, the Bears are on the ropes, to say the least, trailing by four here in the fourth quarter. Well, the difference is obviously this is a tough situation for Baylor to be in down four, but when they did not get those two defensive rebounds on those two consecutive possessions by Maryland with a minute to go, that was a tough, tough break for Baylor, but great job by Maryland on the offensive glass. So many phases of the game have, have come into importance here in the latter stages of this contest. Looking over the replay, the six foot Ferreira banging into Aliza Pinzon at 5'8", the transfer from USF. Coach Collin talking it over with her girls. Well, this is entirely too long. I'm telling you this, the officials <laughs> have to make, they have to make a decision. Uh, nothing's gonna change here. They have to look at it and make a call. There's only so many angles they can look at. Well, here's another one. At least the first time we've seen this. Not much revealing about this vantage no, point. It's such a, a, a distance, but uh, they keep obviously looking and looking and looking. You want them to want to make sure they're correct, but. Goodness gracious, this has already been four minutes. It's a problem you didn't have to deal with back in the Southwest Conference days. <laughs> we didn't have three <laughs> plays. We didn't have TV for every game. <laughs> Rules have changed. Quickness of the game has changed. You can see the smile on the face of Brenda Freeze there. We, when we have seen a feverish pace this afternoon. Just a great basketball game. Exciting. Well, the too. second half has been a great game. The first half was kind of ugly. Not, not necessarily the fact that Maryland had a 10-point advantage at the half, but the second half has been extremely well played by both teams. Ma Forsberg with the basketball, the official there. Looks like orders restored, and it will stay Maryland basketball. Well, Baylor, obviously, if they want to have any hope at all, they'd like to get a desperation steal. If not, they've got a foul on the throw. And well, you knew there was no doubt where it was going to go. I mean, it's easy for me to sit here and say, but I would have done everything in the world to try to keep the ball out of the hands of Diamond Miller. Easier, easier said than done. I'm sure that was obviously discussed. Looking down at the baseline, there are five WNBA scouts here to check out Miller, who's got 29 points and will head back to the free throw line. Well, now that'll be, uh, there's one more. Baylor can get, it's the fifth team foul that lets the other team go to the free throw line. Pins on mm. to Miller, who is fouled. This time, she will go to the free throw line. Well, that's a tough assignment for Cat Ferrer to try to keep her from getting the basketball, but Maryland did the right thing, did a good job of getting the ball into the hands of not only their best player, but their best athlete. At 6-3, she can go up and get a high pass, get an errant pass, just a great, great player. I was thinking about that. It's easier for them to inbound to her. She's got such bounce and length. She makes one of these free throws. She's a 30-point scorer in today's game. There you go. Career high for Diamond Miller. Yeah, got a double-double. She and the freshman for Baylor, Dariana Little Page Bugs, both double-doubles. Plagued by knee issues last season, and she is 100% now. Timeout coach Nikki Collin and Baylor. Well, that free throw miss right there, you, you can think dreams. And right now, obviously, two threes would give Baylor the win. If they can knock one down quick, foul, get the ball back, get a steal, whatever. Crazier things have happened, Pete, on many basketball floors than making up five points in nine and a half seconds. 
big key is Baylor's got to score very quickly here. I'm sure you'll see some type of action to try to free up Sarah Andrews for the shot because she's the, the hot hand for Baylor in this second half. Down five, do you go right for the three or do you try to get a two inside? Well, whatever the best scoring option is quickly. You know you've got to score twice to either tie the game or win it. So whatever opportunity opens up first, I have a feeling Stanford will be all over the three-point line. So if you get a quick drive, get a bucket with, say, six seconds to go, crazy things can happen. Terps up 571-66 in this top 20 matchup. It has been just as good as advertised. Yeah, a true top 20 matchup. I saw uh, something on the ESPN website last week that said this was one of the top 10 non-conference matchups in the country in this early season. You and I are fortunate to be able to be here to see it and talk about First it. First thing I said, yes, and I can't believe I get, I get the opportunity yeah, to do this This one. is a good one. A lot of talent, both coaches, Nikki Collin, Brenda Freeze, done nice jobs making adjustments here all game long. Jaden Owens, the number one assist maker in the Big 12 this current time in the season, making the inbounds pass for Baylor. Andrews controls. It's hard to the hoop. There you quickly go, they very score. quickly, seven, seven seconds. Good timeout, nice play. Good job by Nikki Collins calling that play. Good job by Sarah Andrews getting her 25th point of the ball game. Now you've got the chance with seven seconds to go to make something fantastic happen with a steal. Who knows, you don't get the steal, get the quick foul, miss a free throw, come down and hit a three. Some sure-handed players in that Maryland lineup, they'll, they'll be sure to get the ball to either Abby Myers, I would assume, but most importantly, Diamond Miller is their target. Well, Diamond Miller's been their primary target all game long. Why change now? She's got 31 points, just a fantastic game. Abby, Abby Meyer, you mentioned the transfer from Princeton with another double-double maker, 13 points and 10 rebounds. There have been some phenomenal performances, especially this second half in this game for both teams. Sarah Andrews has 21 or 22 points, I think, in the second half alone. I think she just had three points at halftime. Exactly right. 22 points. She's yeah. got a career high. On the evening, Andrews has 25. But now it's all about stopping Maryland before Baylor has the opportunity to put any more points on the board and get this one locked. Of course, those new rules I talked about about five years ago, they can move it up to the front court. So that rule changed the same time the five fouls changed. Jaden Owens hands up defense. Diamond Miller gets the inbound pass and is quickly fouled. Well, obviously they were trying to, Andrews and Owens trying to keep Miller from getting the ball. The problem is Miller's as quick as those two little jets are for Baylor. <laughs> On the game, Miller six for eight from the free throw line. No two bigger than right now. Buries the first. Well, that's, that was the difference maker right there. That was huge. What a great player. We knew it coming in. She's proved it even more here this afternoon the great competitor so the lead extends to five and coach nick will want to talk it over well baylor will get it in the front court as well last minute of the game you have that option to take the time out and move the ball up court and after this, on Wednesday, Baylor set to travel to Florida. Yeah, what a great uh, tournament that's going to be. They've got some uh, real good matchups down there in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. It's, a, it's wonderful to see them be able to have that tournament after the devastating hurricane hit that part of Florida in October. And Baylor will play at 10 a.m. on the 25th, their first game there. But right now, They'd love to pull off a miracle against the Turks. Owens will inbound again. Diamond Miller hands up Harry defense. 
And a foul is called on Masonis. Or did yeah. she knock it out of bounds? Yeah, nice job by Masonis. Good quick hands without fouling. They'll say it was knocked out of bounds. 5.7 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Baylor down five on a wing and a prayer. Andrews. Oh, yeah. and she is stuffed by Sellers, and that'll do it. Well, yeah, great defense by Maryland. You wouldn't expect anything less. Tough situation for Baylor on that last possession. But, Pete, what a great, great game we saw here this afternoon. Both teams played exceptionally well in the second half of this contest. Yeah, what an exciting women's college basketball top 20 matchup. Maryland ends up coming away with the win 73 to 68. Coach Nikki Collin will go back to the drawing board with her girls before they head to Florida. But how about Diamond Miller on Maryland, Coach? Well, she was a true All-American. The diamond is a diamond. She was just phenomenal. She was obviously the difference in the game, but no better the second half than Sarah Andrews was for Baylor. This was a matchup of outstanding top 20 teams loaded with outstanding players. Just a terrific college basketball game here early in the season. First loss of the season for Baylor. They fall to 3-1. and one. Maryland at 4-1. and one continues to improve and will try to improve on that number 19 ranking in the AP. Next Baylor women's telecast versus Houston Christian. That'll be December 4th at 2 Central. Big 12 now on ESPN+.